BT's Business Report is sponsored by Dynamic Funds. Time now to say good morning to Mike Apple for the latest in business news. First of all, Mike, so good to see you. I hope you had a good yeah, Thanksgiving. You too. Good morning. Thanks. Yes, indeed. You know, a uh, uh, little show and tell went yeah. to the Norfolk County Fair in Simcoe, Ontario. Okay. All it right. was uh, open for business and uh, picked up the uh, official paraphernalia there. Oh, I love that. Norfolk. That's uh, proprietors of the uh, promotional garb for Norfolk County is uh, Eric Drew and Ashley, a small business operator there. Spoke to them a little bit at the fair, and they're uh, promoting all of the tourism that you can do down in uh, Norfolk County. Home of Apple's Corners, by the way, which is a, which is a huge tourist destination. Is don't it? Don't blink. Don't blink because you might miss it. Okay. It's right. It's just <laughs> right there. Okay. But listen, it, it was just nice to get uh, to an event. You know, they had um, uh, social distancing uh, rules within the, the pavilions. You had to be double vaxxed to get in. And uh, just kind of nice to see, and we'll see more of that uh, going forward here. Tammy. Yeah, and you know what? It's great for those small businesses as well um, sure to was. get out there and to be Indeed. back into the swing of things. And were tractors involved? I have to ask that. <laughs> no, I looked at a few, didn't buy anything, bought right. a couple of other things uh, from some of the, uh, the uh, you know, you go to the fair and there's always something interesting, you know, whether it's uh, pots and pans or massage gear or what have you. You're always coming away with something. Something. All <laughs> right. Well, okay. Back to business now when it yes. comes to uh, being back to business. Cineplex mm. uh, getting some good news uh, last Friday about opening up again. Yeah, along with, uh, you know, sports stadiums, theaters are reopening at, at full capacity after that Friday afternoon uh, announcement by the Ford government at 5 o'clock. Uh, but look, uh, Cineplex has been clamoring for this, as has uh, Landmark and the other uh, theater operators. And we had a big uh, weekend with uh, the latest James Bond movie. So it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, how, uh, you know, do people go back uh, like they did before? Were they uh, just waiting to get back into a full capacity theater uh, cinema situation? And we'll be watching the share price of Cineplex. Has actually seen a little bit of a move here uh, of late, Tammy, going up a little bit because it figures to actually start making money again after more than a year and a half of substantial losses. Right. It'll take some time, but I'm sure they're going to be back up there, uh, especially mm -hmm. as the Christmas season heads toward uh, towards Absolutely. us. Uh, now, going to Huawei. So we're hearing that uh, most of Canadians don't really want to see it here in the country. Yeah, 75% of Canadians surveyed by Nanos Research say that the Trudeau government should put in an outright ban on Huawei for supplying the 5G network. Now, this has been something that's been debated here for the past oh, two, three years and has been amplified, of course, by the recent developments with uh, Meng Wanzhou, the uh, Huawei executive sent back to China, and the release of the two Michaels on the same day by China. And Canadians are kind of done with this company, saying, no, there's all sorts of uh, perceived uh, risk related to spying, how close Huawei is to the Chinese government. And uh, Huawei has already been banned by uh, the U.S., the U.K., and Australia for 5G. The Trudeau government expected to make some sort of announcement tomorrow, but does that further damage relations if they ban Huawei? That's going to be an interesting announcement, certainly coming from Ottawa. Yeah, we'll see what they say there. Uh, when it comes to COVID-19, a brand new treatment could be on the horizon, but it's going to cost mm -hmm. you. Yeah, this Merck antiviral pill to treat covid uh, they say it uh, you know, reduces the risk of hospitalization or death by 50%. But the price point on this thing, it's not cheap. $700 per treatment. It's a five-day regimen. I guess you have to take four pills per day once you come on with the onset of uh, COVID-19. And this, again, for high-risk uh, or immune-compromised uh, people or, you know, just they, they want to keep people out of the hospital. 67 million Americans are still not vaccinated. Uh, Tammy, so there's actually a simpler solution. Get vaccinated. You don't have to take this necessarily. And it's going to be looked at by Health Canada. We'll see if and when it gets approved here. Uh, but in the States, they're, they're looking at this much more closely. Yeah, you can save your money for gas because the price of gas going <laughs> up with the, uh, with the price of oil as well. Tell us about that. $80 per barrel and getting higher this morning is the price for oil. And uh, it does not look like this uptrend is slowing down anytime soon. We're looking at a buck 45 or thereabouts per liter in the GTA for gas to start the holiday shortened trading week. Where remember yesterday was a holiday. So uh, traders are kind of coming back uh, to the office today and looking at these uh, higher price points for energy. It's called energy switching. 
uh, in the European Union right now and other countries overseas, Tammy, because certain types of uh, energy have gotten extremely expensive, natural gas being one of them. Uh, the solar and wind power has not lived up to expectations, and now people are the traders are bidding up the energy contracts and sending the price for oil worldwide diesel, jet fuel, goodness sakes, the airlines need that. Uh, they certainly don't uh, for their costs. But uh, yeah, the cost of transportation getting much more expensive. All right. And we'll be watching that, of course, in the coming weeks as well. Mike, so good to talk to you this morning. You too. Really Have great to see you. You too.